Okay, this is the next guy I'm gonna try and take apart. I, I see evil in this thing. I kind of drew it here. I think it looks like this with a horn. So he's gonna he's gonna cut out through here, place the jaw, cut the hooves off, cut out here in the back. I think I may put some wings on him, some ske like skeletal type wings on him, and a new tail. I think he needs a new tail. I don't like this tail. Well, the first step in this process of uh, releasing this demon is cutting open this horse and taking all the stuffing out of it. So I cut the face open about the size I wanted the mouth to be hanging out, and I needed to cut the hooves off. And of course, while I'm doing this with my X-Acto knife, I ended up poking myself in the hand and bleeding, so I had to go get a Band-Aid so I didn't bleed all over the white fur. After doing that, I needed to, uh, some stability, putting a large head on this thing uh, will cause it not to be able to stand up. So I took some uh, clothes hangers and uh, stuck them down each, uh, bent them in half and stuck them down each leg. And then I ran a larger wire down the middle of the spine and up into the head where I'm going to attach the head to. <clears throat> Once I got them in there, I took a smaller wire and wrapped it all up. And, of course, that smaller wire ended up poking me in the finger again, and I had to go get another Band-Aid. So, it surprised, you know, I baked fake blood on the end of this with, on the horse, and, and surprised I didn't get blood all over it at this point right here. Okay, so once I got all that together, I needed to uh, break out the epoxy sculpt and place it over the two joints that I wired together so they would stay in place and not spin around. I didn't want the head to fall over to one side or the other so I got some epoxy sculpt out and stuck it on there and then clothes pinned uh, around it so it would stick to the fur as it dried. So I got all that together and let it dry. My next step was uh, starting to make the uh, feet on these things. So I made a couple of balls of foil and poked a uh, clothes hanger wire into the top of it to make a hole the same size of what's poking out of the leg. So when I go to put these on, I could just slide them all in there, I already have a hole available. So I cut me uh, four wires and place them around there and I'm gonna build the uh, hooves around all of these things and make them all the same so they'll fit up in there. <clears throat> so now it's time I started adding clay to it. I uh, This uh, I'm using uh, translucent uh, Actually, this is uh, Cato Polyclay, so I'm using that to put on here to make the hooves. I, you know, wanted to make them like a, when you bake this, it comes out to look like teeth. This is what I use for the teeth of my dragon, so when you put them on here, I want it to kind of look like teeth here. Uh, this is the first iteration of the hooves. I kind of didn't like the way this did. I altered it a little bit. I like the point on the front, and then I altered it a little bit going forward. When compiling all these videos, when I uploaded into iMovie here, I had uh, over an hour's worth of footage. And I'm not going to keep this thing an, all, uh, an hour long. I'm going to speed up some parts, you know, when I don't do my voiceover work, or even when I do some voiceover work. I'm going to speed up some areas because you guys don't want to sit through an hour-long video of this. Or, if you do, leave me a comment if you haven't already skipped past this part. You can leave me a comment and say I'd like to see all the footage and I can put out there a longer video if you'd like to see it. Here's the final version of the hooves I have and I'm adding Super Sculpey all over top of the Cato Polyclay. And I have the uh, wires still stuck in there so I have the channel I need so when I jam them up into the horse uh, they'll fit properly and uh, I won't have a problem there and it'll be on the end of the leg. Uh, wire I have in there and be able to stand. So I'm adding clay to all these and then I'm going to uh, I had to make the top part a little thicker around the top so the uh, the cloth in there would uh, or the material would adhere. I'd have something to glue it to which is why I have that donut shape at the top. And I'm just adding some details here and there. Um, 
I'm going to speed up some of this stuff. I know it's already sped up. I, I recorded this at eight times speed. And, uh, you know, I do that to save uh, some space on my phone because I fill up my phone a little too uh, quickly if I record at normal speed. It, the, the videos are a lot longer. So I recorded eight times speed so I can get more videos on my phone. And it makes it a little easier to edit because uh, the files are a little bit shorter. So I was just basically uh, messing around here and adding some detail here and there. Uh, using uh, I used uh, some stamps that I made for the back of the foot and or hoof. And on the front of the hoof here, I'm just making some some weird designs and some things I look thought uh, look, would look cool. So I'm gonna maybe speed this up a little bit more, or I could just uh, sit here in silence and watch with you guys. So I'm basically just keep adding more detail on this uh, the hooves. I make all of them uh, pretty much exactly the same. There are little differences that you get when you're sculpting things and uh, the two front hooves are a little bit uh, smaller than the back hooves and uh, I think I'm going to uh, step on the accelerator and speed this up a little bit. As I said I used a uh, stamp I made to texture the back of the hoof and I uh, break out the uh, plastic to uh, you know do some detailing to make it uh, look kind of like skin here and there on the uh, hoof. So um, let's see, here we go. And then after that, I uh, framed out and added uh, Super Sculpty to uh, the mouth there. I uh, just twisted some wire frame together, stuck it in the head, and made sure it fit correctly. I then uh, added the uh, uh, Super Sculpty firm and baked it so it, it would stay in place as I added the uh, uh, regular Super Sculpty medium here, and I'm just kind of building it out. After that, I uh, rolled out a tongue, and I wanted to make the tongue um, put a place inside uh, for the tongue to stick so I could remove the tongue while painting because, I don't know, when you're painting the insides of mouths, um, it's a pain in the butt when you can't reach certain spots. So with a detachable tongue, it makes that so much easier. So uh, basically what I'm doing here is uh, measuring out a spot for the tongue to uh, so I can uh, after I bake it I can stick it in and out. So I bake the tongue first and then come back and make sure and measure it out and make sure it fits and then uh, try again and go from there. Um, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit uh, some of the detail work on here uh, so this movie doesn't last forever. So now I'm basically fleshing out the tongue here and uh, adding some detail to it. I didn't want it this to be a uh, flat tongue with stamps on it, so uh, you're stamping a pattern on it. So I wanted to uh, add some vein looking things all over it, and uh, that's what I'm doing here, rolling out the, the vein looking things and blending them in. Then I get out the um, plastic and I. Uh, Texture, texture it that way, and I mix grooves in it and make it uneven. So I, I thought that came out pretty good. Uh, while I was making uh, this um, horse here, um, <clears throat> we were out at uh, 7-Eleven, and I spotted a little tiny owl, a uh, little stuffed owl in in the bin. It was a uh, what do you call it, a keychain. So I ended up buying it. It was like three bucks and I ended up uh, cutting that thing open in between doing all this and uh, making a, uh, a little demented owl. Um, I guess I'll uh, cut together a small video of how I made that. It was a lot quicker making that one than this thing. It was just, uh, I just made a mouth for it. I didn't make any other parts and have to assemble them all together like I did in this guy. So now I'm just trying to put some details in the mouth here. Um, I added some uh, texture on cheeks there and I needed a, uh, the last time I uh, 
did uh, when I was doing my bipolar bear, I didn't leave myself enough clay around the mouth to stick the teeth into. So here I'm lining the mouth and making it a little thicker so I have a little bit of uh, uh, bulk there to stick the teeth into so they would adhere a little better. On the bipolar bear I had to take a bunch of them out and, and then glue them back in because it kind of didn't stick in there but once you glue them back in they, they stayed just fine but uh, initially uh, they after I baked it and I touched one of the tooth and it came right out because I didn't have enough clay in there holding it together. So on this one I definitely made sure I uh, made the mouth thick enough through where the teeth go so that it would hold the, uh, the clay. The only worry about uh, making things this thick out of clay is the, the weight of it on a stuffed animal which is why I uh, added the skeleton on the inside to make sure that there's enough there to hold this guy up and so he wouldn't uh, tip over. Uh, the other thing I had to do is uh, even though there was a structure inside the stuffed animal it was still going to be top heavy toward the head and fall forward. So uh, if you guys ever plan on doing one of these a uh, good thing to uh, think about is I went to uh, Walmart and bought a uh, fishing weight. Uh, it was a, uh, I think a six ounce weight. Um, and it, the hole on it fit perfectly on the clothes hanger I have. So basically what I did is slid it up the leg in the back of the horse and then bent the wire a little bit so it would stay up in there. So now it's it's evened out. I have some weight in the back to counteract how much the head weighs. Um, and the other worry I had while making this thing was making actually the whole thing too heavy to where the wire I used in the legs would not be strong enough to support all the weight. Uh, which is why when I decided to make the wings I made them like a skeletal wing with not a membrane across because when you put add the mesh across and then add more clay which is more weight then you have to worry about the thing collapsing under its own weight. So it's kind of a uh, tricky situation when you uh, trying to figure out how to design these things and I mean if it's just going to be the face and it's just going to sit up in the corner It'll, it'll be fine, but I'm trying to make this thing stand on its own, which some stuffed animals will do and some won't, depending on the stuffed animal. Um, when I got the horse, it wouldn't stand on its own, so I knew I would have to have an armature inside it to hold it up. So I decided to, uh, uh, you know, make the A-frame inside it. Uh, at this point, I'm just adding a bunch of teeth in here. Uh, you jam the teeth in here and there. Um, uh, some of them where the clay is a little thin, I'm using the uh, liquid poly clay and uh, gluing them in that way. So, you know, I, I make the hole and put some uh, liquid clay in there and then stick the tooth back in there so it'll hold and, and not fall out so easy. Um, the only thing is about uh, uh, next time I do one of these, I think I'm going to pre color the clay. Uh, using some, I went and bought some uh, pastel chalks and I'm going to probably put some uh, dark pigment in around the mouth. Uh, you see I, it looks dark around in there right now. What I tried to do is uh, you know scrape off some pigment and I didn't um, knead it into the clay which I should have done. What I did was I tried to paint it on uh, with a paintbrush. Just use the powder uh, pigment and then try to paint it on and it didn't come out dark enough a lot of it came off so what I need to do is knead it into clay to make that dark through there because it's a real pain in the butt trying to paint around all those teeth and then you know you get paint on the teeth because uh, my hand isn't real steady I get paint on the teeth and then you gotta sit there for an hour and clean off each tooth and it's a real pain in the butt so you know working smarter if you uh, put some color down there ahead of time then maybe you don't have to throw as much paint on it. So I'll have to try that next time, I think. All right, this is the horn I made. I just took two pieces of clay and then spun them together and uh, then made some skin around it. So when it looks on, on the head, it's not just the horn. There's some skin uh, attached to that, too. 
Uh, so now on the on the tail, I'm you know putting together. Uh, I just took some wire and wrapped some clay around it, and I kind of wanted to make it look like a skeletal type uh, tail. So I'm adding. Uh, I first added another piece along the top and cut it out to make it look like bone up on top, and you know put some. Uh, some holes there to make it kind of look like there's it looks like a skeletal structure and then now I'm just trying to add some rings around the bottom to give some separation in between each one of the uh, links of the tail so I'll be quiet here for a minute and uh, let you watch the video a little more Okay, so that was almost a minute. That didn't last very long. You know, I was, you know, I sit here and I rewatch this video. You know, when you're watching yourself do these things, you think, oh, nobody else wants to see this stuff. And then I remember when I watch other people sculpting videos and stuff, um, I really do enjoy watching how they work and how they do things. Uh, I do learn a lot from watching other people's videos. There's a lot of good ones out there, and I really appreciate uh, all the work they do and put into them. I, that's the reason why I got back into uh, sculpting. I used to sculpt when I was in high school, way back when, and um, I wish I would have known back then the techniques I've learned from watching you guys uh, sculpt. There's a lot of people out there that do great work. And I've learned quite a bit uh, watching a lot of people sculpt. And uh, I think YouTube is the greatest thing to be able to share like this. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. I really do enjoy making these things. And uh, being able to share them with you makes it that much more enjoyable. Um, you know, I'm looking at this and I still have like 28 minutes of video total. And I don't know, it seemed like quite a bit. I don't know if I can talk for that long. Um, I'm running out of things to say. I'm trying to fill time here, so I'm not uh, throwing just a uh, musical score over top of this. You know, it takes a while to try and figure out uh, what music would go good with this and going and hunting it down and putting it on there and and then editing and is it going to go too long? Oh, I don't have it enough music and I got to replay the same thing and some of you guys don't like the music I pick, some of you do. So, I don't know. I guess I'll just ramble on and fill the time while you're watching me uh, put the rings on this, day, <clears throat> this tail. Exciting stuff, I know. But uh, yeah, I'll just let you enjoy the video without uh, talking over it. I mean, most of you guys probably muted me anyway. So. Uh, now it's the favorite time, painting time. I think out of doing all this sculpting and stuff, the... Uh, the thing that gives me most anxiety is uh, painting and surprisingly uh, my painting comes out I think my uh, the painting I do come on these things comes out pretty good but I don't know I always uh, uh, trying to figure out how to paint it how it's gonna look what colors to use that gives me more anxiety than anything when I'm doing this kind of stuff And especially when you've got to go and try and paint around this many teeth, it's impossible not to get paint on the teeth. I've tried. I tried going slow. Uh, and eventually you just get to a point where you're like, well, I just got to paint it and, and then wash the teeth off and scrape some paint off the teeth. Um, it's easy enough to clean, but man, it's time consuming. The other uh, Cleaning this guy up, uh, I probably sat there for an hour and a half just scraping teeth. And yeah, it's not not a whole lot of fun. But I do have to say the the Cato Polyclay I've, I'm using for this guy, um, the teeth are a lot more a uh, lot stronger than uh, Primo Scopoli. I've I've uh, come to find out. I did not break one of these teeth. I break in on my dragons. Sometimes I break teeth doing things. You know, you move a little too quick and pop, there goes a tooth and it falls right off. And then you got to fix it. Um, these teeth, not one of them broke. Uh, even on, I use these uh, 
Mercado polyclea and the po uh, bipolar bear. So yeah, that one I didn't break any off either. So here's the system I came up with for the back of the bear, uh, the the horse. Uh, in order to maybe sell this thing and ship it somewhere, I needed to figure out a way uh, to attach wings to it that would be removable so I could put it in a box. So basically I balled up some foil and then I put some super sculpty around it and made this thing to, to fit over top of the wire that I have running down the middle of the back of the thing. I then made some wings, uh, used some, you know, the same wire, and I, I made some wings and used uh, some epoxy sculpt to hold them together at the tip there. And then the part that goes in, I made a uh, little triangle there and then poked a hole into the sculpey so it would fit, and it looks like that. So I could um, add the wings to the beast and be able to take them off in case I needed to either store this thing somewhere or box it up. So basically that's what I'm looking at there. Also, uh, I didn't film the part where I jammed all the head and the, the hooves on inside this thing. Um, basically all I did was got my hot glue gun out and stuck the pieces inside where I had the holes and then glue them in. Um, there's uh, nothing real exciting about that. And uh, here I sped this up pretty quick. I am putting the wings together here. And basically I'm just covering them with uh, uh, Super Sculpey. And uh, making sure they fit where I want them to fit. <clears throat> so I, I roll out a piece in. Uh, I didn't want to make them, uh, I didn't make it real thick. I had to really use the thin on the wires there. I because of the, the weight thing I didn't I was worried that the the wings were going to be too uh, heavy on the back there because when I got all the pieces together and, and stood him up there the the legs at this point I didn't add more stuffing to it yet um, the legs seemed to be a little wobbly but then when I uh, jammed more stuffing down into the legs um, it got a lot more stable and it was after this point I could have probably uh, done some more detail work and added some more weight to these and still been okay but at the time I wasn't sure so the uh, horse ended up looking a little fatter than usual because I had to uh, jam so much stuffing down in there to make it a little firmer down there so he didn't uh, tip over or the legs didn't collapse under the weight of everything and I stuck on him but uh, after putting the thing together he's pretty sturdy he's not going anywhere he's gonna he's, he's gonna stay up um, so um, I guess I'll go quiet here for a while and then uh, let's see how long I last for something else I'd, I'd like to tell you about as we're going You know, it happens all the time where I'll record these <clears throat> and do some voiceover on some things and then later on figure out uh, there was something I wanted to add. Oh, I forgot to turn push record when I sculpted this thing, so I'm showing you what it looks like now. Um, basically, that's the middle piece. I just uh, balled up a piece of foil over top of it to bulk out the middle, added some horns, and now I'm just sitting there pointing at it like a dork. So, now I, I've I put that all together and I baked it. It's all been baked and now I'm the, the fit test. I really need a cameraman. Trying to do this with one hand and film with the other doesn't seem to work for me very well. But basically, uh, that's what I ended up with. Now, I really like the way this came out. So when I, I, I'm, I got a uh, plans for a uh, dragon made out of Sculpey here sometime soon and I like the way those wings came out. So that was a good proof of concept of how to make wings. I've never made wings like that before out of Sculpey. It's always been uh, paper mache. You guys have seen it. And uh, here we are back to painting again. Well, at least the colors I already have are all planned out because I've already painted the other things. So that's not the bad part. So I, not, no stress there. But uh, 
as I was saying earlier, you know, as soon as I turn this video off, it's going to happen. I know it is. I'm going to think of something else that I forgot to tell you guys. And I don't want to go back and cut it out and redo the whole thing. So eh, maybe I'll fill it in next time. Maybe I won't. You never know. But uh, basically, uh, uh, this thing, to put it together, it took me, I don't know, about a week or so, maybe over a week. I have to go back through my Instagram pictures. Uh, it took a little while to put this guy together because, you know, I have everything going on with the family and life and, and work. So I worked on it as much as I could when I could, and I, I'm really pleased with the way he came out. He looks really disgusting, according to my wife, and uh, I, I really, he looks pretty evil. That's what I was going for. An evil looking thing that you would not want to find in a dark alley. I'm not sure why it would be in a dark alley, but that's not where you'd want to find it. So, I guess I'll just kind of sit here and watch with you for the closing parts of this thing. So basically, usually, yeah, I couldn't keep quiet, sorry. When, I'm, when I use a lot of times when I'm painting, I use a lot of dry brush techniques on these things. You know, I, I do my initial coat, then I do a dark wash to get the, the shadows, and then I come back and do a lighter um, dry brush technique over top of these things because there's so much texture on them, it picks it up real nice. Here I am trying to glue this thing in the back. There was one part here on the one side that, didn't want to stick very well, but uh, after a bit of arguing and fighting with it, it finally, yeah, that's the part right there. He wanted to be a pain because I got so much stuffing in that thing, it wanted to bulk out. It made him a little too fat. Kind of matches me a little too heavy, but hey, he came out pretty good. So um, after some arguing and fighting with it, it stayed, and he came out pretty good. I had a hole in the side of his head for some reason. I don't know how it got there. I'm gluing that back up. Uh, the other thing that makes this thing pop is when, uh, uh, especially on the white, you know, just putting red around the, the edges, uh, you know, you, you don't get the same look. So I add, uh, I paint black around there first to make it look like it's a crevice, and then I add the red. So here's the final product. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you do, uh, leave me a like, and uh, please, uh, if, you, if you like these kinds of things, join my channel, and, uh, and jump in there and hit the subscribe button. Thanks, guys.